Hello, my name is Paul Tingey, and in this video I'm going to show you Brickstick, my entry for the Microsoft Dare to Dream Different Challenge 2009. I, like many programmers, have a history in building stuff with Lego. I build robots using Lego's Mindstorms Next robotic system. This is a great bit of kit, but there has always been an uneasy gap between physically building a robot and doing the programming to get it running. The programming stage involves stepping away from the piles of Lego and sitting at a PC to write your code. Once you have it complete, you can download it to the brick and run it, but currently there is no feedback given on how the program is executing. My Dream entry addresses this gap by allowing programming on the Lego brick itself via a simple touch interface. It also displays and charts live I.O. values in a friendly way. Today, I'm going to show you how this works with a few demos and screen cams. Brickstick is programmed using a simple model of data flow. Data is read from inputs, converted in some way, and written to outputs. This data flow is repeated over a series of steps to form a program. Let's look at an example. Say we want to hook up a games controller to a XAML shooter. We want the shooter to pan left and right and fire when required. To implement panning, we need to read the x-axis value from a joystick and map it to the position value of a servo. To pull the trigger, we need to read a button on the controller and when pressed, drive another servo to a predefined position. Both the games controller and the servo will be accessed by the IFC bus. Now let's look at how this program looks in Brickstick. The program literally represents the mappings I have described. The first mapping reads values from the joystick and writes them to the servo. The second mapping takes the button value and runs it through a converter which checks if it is passed through a threshold value. Using this, it outputs one of two predefined values to the trigger servo. When running, we can also see mini charts showing the real-time values of each component in the program. We can also drill into the mappings to see more detail. The inputs are at the top, the converters in the middle, and the outputs at the bottom. On this drill down, we can see the toggle converter in the middle flipping between the two values. Our second demo uses an onboard timer to step through a sequence of colour values and outputs them to a multicoloured LED. Again, this uses a simple input to output mapping. In this case, the input is just a sequence number driven by the timer. Again, we can drill down and see more detail. Our third demo uses some more intelligent I.O. A Nextcam camera sensor on the right detects the visual position of a red ball. This is passed through a toggle converter which selects one of two images and displays them on the LED matrix. The next cam is on the ITC bus and the LED matrix is on the SBI bus. This shows that any I.O. value that can be represented by an integer can be controlled by Brickstick. Now let's look at some of the other screens in Brickstack. The file screen lets us select one of the predefined programs to run. 
The I.O. screen gives a summarized view of the program's I.O. without showing the program itself. In this case, we can see the PSP controller at the top. To build a program, we simply add converters and I.O. via selection menus. Here we are adding a toggle converter and then some I.O. from a next cam. Currently, BrickStick supports six I.O. devices and five converters. These are easy to extend and add more. It's worth noting these screen cams were taken off the emulator, which runs slower than the Tahoe prototyping board. Now let's look at our final demo, the Mighty Digger. This builds on the I.O. and converters we've seen so far. The digger is powered by four LEGO power function motors. Each motor can be driven forward and backward at one of seven speeds. We use a special tank converter to translate the X and Y axes on the joystick to the left and right power values on the digger. This lets us control the tank with a single joystick. As you can see, it's quite nimble. And here we can see the program for the tank converter. The arrows indicate which way each of the tracks will go, and therefore which way the tank will turn. The digger arm uses a mechanical gear stick to switch between driving the upper and lower sections of the arm. We toggle these using a servo controlled by a button. And finally, we use two buttons and a nudge converter to either nudge up or down the position of the camera tilt servo. As you can see, BrickStick is a lot of fun to play with. The simple I.O. mapping model makes it easy to hook up different types of I.O. We could easily add other sensors including compass, tilt or temperature sensors. Another nice thing is that the program scanning model retains previous scans. History of all input and output values is available in the stream, which could be sent to other devices. The implementation of BrickStick was relatively easy. The tools available for the .NET Micro Framework are easy to use for any competent c -sharp developer, even a desktop developer like me. Well, that's all for now. I hope you enjoyed this video.